territory of Ghana for the exclusive use of the United States Armed Forces. Our laws will not have any form of application within those designated areas and facilities that the United States Armed Forces would have exclusive access and use of. When you do that within a sovereign state, the, you are the, selling your sovereignty. The for, interesting part for, in all of this is that, Honorable, and I dare not interrupt you, but I want to be clear in my mind. You met with the Defense Minister. He told us in the press conference that he explained to you in that particular engagement that that is something that's going to happen today, not tomorrow, under the watch of the Nadan Kufuado. And that this is just an enhancement upon previous arrangements that you, your government, actually supervised in times past. And what he's doing is rather being open I, about that process. I, I am scandalized that attempts are being made to create the impression that uh, previously, whatever arrangements we may have struck with the United States government in relation to our military cooperation is the same agreement which has now been brought back before Parliament for consideration. If that were the case, why, 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 why bring back a brand new um, agreement for Parliament's consideration? We should have continued with the old agreements. Okay. But it is even clear, if you go through the articles of this new agreement, that what they are seeking is an enhanced form of military cooperation which would take the form of granting them unimpeded access to military facilities which qualifies for bases. And I've heard people argue strenuously that they are not going to set up military bases in the country. The fundamental question to ask is, what is a military base? I mean, if you are granting access and unim 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 un uh, unimpeded Peded. access mm -hmm. to facilities, you know, you that belong to our military, to a, 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 a dominant military power, the United States of America. Your you committee turn met. around, you look at us in the face and say, they are not going to create a military base in this country. They won't have permanent military presence. They are bringing in equipment, heavy machinery. They are entitled to bring into this country material, which has not even been defined. I mean, in Article 7. I'll take you through Article 7. Okay, I'll come back it to could that. Even, it, those materials could even pass for chemical weapons, nuclear weapons. No, I, They're entitled I, I to bring those into that our you country. You are clarifying and seeking to ask these questions in the open. When the defense minister was before you just yesterday, so what kind of deliberation did you have with him? Why has all of these questions not been clarified? Because he insists that, one, there's no base at play here. Two, he says there are two facilities around the Kotka International Airport. These are the facilities that they'll be using. He also proceeds to say that, of course, after training, they'll surely engage us in training, which His is... His explanation something. was simply not satisfactory. It was simply not satisfactory because he tried to create the impression that all along we've had similar ag agreements in place with the United States government. Haven't we? We have perused those agreements, and I can tell which you yes, oh, no, that about. we have never come close to having a deal which would grant the United States government unimpeded access to military facilities and that when they, once they have access to those facilities, Ghanaians, our own military personnel, cannot even enter those facilities for inspection. In some cases, we've never come close to having such a, such a deal Just like in the you, United you, States. Forgive me, but you conveniently leave out the part where these are agreed facilities. It's not as if they put a gun to our head to agree to the specific facilities that we ought to that agree to. That is why we are of the view that the agreement does not serve the interest of Ghana. It serves the interest of the United States of America. Have you been we told these agreed, that, agreed facilities? Yes, we have. You've been told as Parliament? Absolutely. Which ones are we but talking about? But there is room for expansion if you go through the text of the agreement. Sorry, I want to be clear. Which ones are we talking about? We're talking about the airport. Facilities dotted around the airport. Mm -hmm. The runway. Mm -hmm. We are saying that as a sovereign are, country... Are these the only facilities they have unimpeded there is access room. to? If you look at the agreement, there is room... Yeah for further agreements to be made yes. subsequent to the coming into force of this particular agreement, if we were to allow it to pass. And they say as mutually agreed. Absolutely. So Ghana has to really agree before any other facility is used. All over the world, wherever the United States has established military bases, there was initial mutual consent and mm -hmm. agreement. Yeah. But after the initial consent, 
you are also aware about the, 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 the numerous human rights abuses that have been occasioned as a result of the presence of those military facilities, I mean, in, in, in those host countries. Mm -hmm. Talk about the, the threat to our own security, the fact that, you know, we become legitimate targets to the adversaries of the United States. Can you quantify that in monetary terms, by the way? So when Ambassador Jackson says uh, they're going to pay 20 million Ghana cities or invest 20 million in training, etc., and so that is our wealth, I mean, it's regrettable. Just regrettable? Absolutely, and unfortunate. But he represents the U.S. of A. Of course. So that is why we think that this agreement is not at arm's length and should be rejected outright by the Nanado government. It doesn't serve the, the best interest of Ghanaians, which is why we're saying that we shouldn't have this agreement in the first place. Mm. Now, it's not born out of ill motive. We've had bilateral ties with the U.S. since independence. Mm -hmm. But we're saying that this particular agreement will not serve our best interest. It, it undermines our sovereignty. It would undermine our security in the long term. And I've seen you elucidate the point on unimpeded access. Is that the only problem you have with this particular agreement? There are numerous provisions in the agreement. Okay, so you which, start with which chapter seeks, 5, 1, which is the unimpeded access part. Yes, you, you yeah. can, let me take you to article, is that article 11? Okay. Article 11 actually deals Even with... Article, um, let, me, let me start with Article 7. Pre-positioning and storage of equipment, supplies, and material. Yeah, what's the problem with that? Yes. Uh, the, what it says said that they are hereby authorized to pre-position and store defense equipment, supplied, uh, and, and the materials uh, as agreed facilities and areas. The pre-positioned material of the United States Forces and the agreed facilities and the areas of portions thereof designated for storage of such pre-positioned material shall be for the exclusive use of the U.S. What is really the problem the, here? The, the point is that if you look at the uh, article, it doesn't even define what material they can bring into our, our, our country. I made that point earlier that if they were but, to bring in chemical weapons, yes, right. If and they the, were and to the minister did not clarify that when he met you. I, I mean, how can he? The, 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 there is an interpretation section yes. in the agreement, so yeah. it is not what the minister says, which is authoritative. But I the just minist want to know ministers whether... will come and go. But this agreement has some. Um, of course, it would uh, outlive governments. Yes, you see, and so whatever the minister says now would not supersede or override what has been expressly captured in the agreement. Material has not been defined in the, in the, in the interpretation section. But and I'm to, saying that... I want to be clear. Yes. Did the minister clarify that to you at your committee level? We asked... In fact, when we got to this particular point, mm -hmm. we called for the entire article to be expunged. Okay. Because it doesn't serve our best interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is um, one and point. And what was the response? The other side said, it's OK. Well, we made our point. Okay. The minority must have a say. Mm. But we're saying that you don't use numbers to achieve certain goals that in the final analysis would not be in the, to the interest, of the, interest of the state. Okay. That is the point. So what Let me take article, you to yeah. um, article, article um, even article 15. Okay, so 15 talks about claims. Article 18. Okay, 15 first. Uh, what's the problem with the claims? It says, other than contractual claims, the parties waive any and all claims against each other for damage to or loss or, or destruction of property owned by the party or death or injury to any military personnel and civilian employees of either party arising out of the performance of their official duties in Ghana. What's the problem with that? The problem is that we are, you're, you're, you're simply saying that Third parties have no right to make claims, right? And third parties in this case will be who and which grouping? You, you could pass for a third party. Mm. You could pass for a third party. I see. So if U.S. military personnel or contractors cause injury to your person, you'll not be entitled to uh, make claims for damages in the court of law. That is what this means. But can anybody They're saying that even in the but event can that... can anybody contract away my rights that way? Well, but that is what this article uh, seeks to do, which is why we think there is everything wrong with the agreement. Mm. Okay. Yeah. There That's are provisions which also seeks to oust 
entirely the jurisdiction of our courts. Look Which, at Article 18, mm -hmm. settlement of disputes. Very much so. It says all of this will be done, um, shall be for, in fact, it said the resolution will be between the two agents for consideration and resolution, as in the ministers of defense for the two countries, right? This is an Oster clause. And that is why we believe strongly that if this agreement passes, it will undermine the sovereignty of Ghana. You cannot come into our country because Ghana is going to be the um, designation for mm. the implementation of this agreement. You're saying that our courts should be bereft of jurisdiction in the event of uh, disputes arising in relation to this agreement. I mean, it's a subjugation of our laws, I mean, in favor of United States laws. But we are a sovereign nation. I mean, there's supposed to be equality between states, I mean, in line with West, Westphalian principles. How, how is there subjugation when, indeed, what it says here is that, I mean, um, all the parties in terms of, it shall be referred to the parties for consultation and resolution as appropriate. It shall not be referred to any other national or international court, tribunal, or similar, or third party for settlement, unless otherwise mutually agreed on. Mutually agreed, so they can attend at will say, no, if you have to go to court, you must seek our consent. If it's not in their interest to go to court because they think they have offended uh, or done wrong, they would simply withhold consent, which is why we think that our jurist, our, our, our very sovereignty mm -hmm. is at stake here. If, 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 if such an agreement with such a provision, an article, is allowed to pass. It's interesting. 